Good morning, church. Welcome to the First Presbyterian Church here in Mattoon, Illinois. If you are visiting with us this morning, we do have a table in the narthex of uh, goodie bags for visitors. And if you bring visitors, make sure that they know about that. There's, I think M&Ms might be inside, but definitely information about our church. This morning, your uh, worship bulletin looks a little bit like a playbill. There's so many exciting things that are happening as you flip the, the last half of your bulletin. is all about some of the events and activities that are coming up here uh, in at First Pres in the fall. Uh, a couple of them I'd like to point out specifically today. Um, next Sunday, uh, the deacons and the Daly family are hosting a, a chili uh, dinner and hay rack ride and all sorts of wonderful things out at their place. This is what that looks like in your bulletin with the details there with the chili pepper. I know that a number of you have signed up to bring chilies and I'm looking forward to eating them. It is, I love chili. Who here loves chili? You all have to come, okay? <laughs> Please join me now for the call to worship. The Spirit and the Church say, Come. The people of the world say, Come. Let everyone who is thirsty come. Receive the gift of the water of life. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us worship God. Please stand if you're able and join us in hymn 401, here in this place, verses 1 and 4 only. We have been buried with Christ in baptism in order that we might be raised to new life with him through faith in the power of God. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess, confess our sins now. Eternal God, in whom we live and move and have our being, whose face is hidden from us by our sins and whose mercy we forget, in the blindness of our hearts. Cleanse us from all our offenses and deliver us from proud thoughts and vain desires that with reverent and humble hearts we may draw near to you, confessing our faults, 
confiding in your grace and finding in you our refuge and strength through Jesus Christ, your Son. Please take a moment now to, of silence to confess your personal sins to God. Hear the good news. Do not fear, says the Lord, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. God is doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. By the grace of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Now please join in in hymn 581. Glory be to the Father. Now please join me in affirming your faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God of abundant life, your grace is our daily bread. Nourish us by your word and fill us with your spirit so that we may grow in faith and love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I am the Lord your God, and I am a jealous God, punishing children for the inequity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation for those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone his, who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God, you shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, male or female slave, ox, donkey, 
or anything that belongs to your neighbor. This is the word of God. And from the New Testament, the gospel according to Mark, chapter 2, verses 23 to 28. This is a story about Jesus and his disciples. So one Sabbath day, one Saturday, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as he and his disciples made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The, the Pharisees said to Jesus, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And Jesus said to them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? How he entered the house of God when Abiathar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence? which is not lawful for any but the priests to eat. And he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for humankind, and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. The Gospel of our Lord. Jesus would often get upset with the Pharisees. Because like we religious people tend to do, we take what is meant to be a gift to us and we turn it into some sort of weird obligation or a way of competing against each other or proving ourselves when God simply wants us to enjoy God, to receive love so that we can pour it out, and for goodness sakes, to take a rest <laughs> because the world can do without us for a day. <laughs> Do we think that God can't handle it without us? But anyway, I want us to think back, to reminisce a little bit right now about, for those of you that have been through grade school, right? To think about your grade school days, to think specifically kind of about those first, second, third, fourth grades, okay? So we all studied reading and writing and arithmetic, which this drives me crazy, but it's referred to as the three R's or some... <laughs> Sometimes, maybe you guys didn't do that. Reading, writing, arithmetic. No, 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 no. Anyway, but there was a fourth R that I really loved about grade school. Do you know what that is? Yes, yes, you guys still remember. You get it. Yes, there was recess. My son Zachary was shocked to learn that his big sister Elizabeth doesn't get recess in high school. This was what shocked him. Why? Why would you take recess away? No, nope, it's all work and no play for my teenage daughter now. And what about for us? Are we too mature and grown up now for recess? Is that what's happened? We can't be like children and take a day when we have no work or responsibility? I've said this before, and I've thought about this, and it's true of me too, but the Sabbath commandment, the commandment, this one is one that we in our culture especially might brag about breaking. Because I think perhaps you, if you're like me, maybe you're probably better than me, but sometimes I'll say, I've been working three weeks and I haven't taken a day off. And I'm saying this as if it's some boast, like, look how hardworking and good I am. When I'm actually saying, for the last three weeks, I've broken God's commandment, and I expect applause. Such a hardworking martyr. Good job. Good job. No. Matthew, who do you think you are? You can't take a day off when it's commanded? God's fourth commandment is to be still. And why does God give us this commandment? Because we're not slaves. Don't treat religion or work or anything else like it's some sort of boss over you. God's like, I am the boss over you, and I am a loving father. As the choir reminded us, lean your head against my breast and hear my heart beating with love for you. Why do you think that this is work? Don't you remember me? Can't you take a day just for the two of us? Just this dance and play and be. You're a human being. Why do you think you always have to be a human doing? Why do you think your value is only in what you do? Don't you know that I look at you and I say your value is in who you are? That's where your value is. And you're like a child. 
And I love you, and I want to see you play, and I want to see you laugh, and I don't want to see you always acting like you're a slave when I have set you free. The result of disobeying the fourth commandment, which not coincidentally is the longest in terms of wording of all of them. It's the longest worded of all the commandments. And the result of breaking it, we see all around us, all around us, and perhaps you're feeling it today. Breaking it results in burnout, workaholism, neglected families, and neglected spirits. And so the God-given fruits of love, joy, peace, all these good things that God wants to give to us, they rot on the vine because we refuse to bask. Just one day in the sun and beauty of God and receive the refreshing rains of grace and just to be. God commanded the Sabbath for a number of reasons so that we would remember that we are part of creation, that we're not just meant to constantly rule over it every day, every day in, day out, just working it, working it, manipulating it, shaping it. Just take one day and allow me to do the hard work which I totally can, says God. I totally can. And I want you to remember that you're not slaves. You're not slaves. So don't treat yourself like a slave either. The Sabbath establishes a different way of appreciating time, which is very counterculture, especially to our American modern mindset. Because here in America, you've heard the term before, time is is money. Money is our way of manipulating things. Time is God's. And it's a gift every day, a free gift from us. We didn't earn it. We didn't pay for it. It's ours. It doesn't belong to us, but it's given to us. And the Sabbath establishes a different way of looking at time. We want to be useful all the time. God says, take time to be useless and just be. So I can delight on you. Those of you that have had children, (laughs) did you ever go into the bedroom when they were young as they were sleeping and just kind of watch them breathing, watch them sleeping and say, oh, I love you? Not in a creepy way, (laughs) but you know. Well, I think God's like, can you just be still so I can watch you breathe, see you resting, and just kind of look over you and say, oh, I love you. I love this one. I love my child. But we disobey this commandment and we turn into gray and gloomy Eeyores, living as if we're under the lash of some tyrannical oppressor. Here I go again into the day. What's going to happen? I've got so much work I've got to (sighs) do. And God is almost saying, who do you think I am? Do you think this is how I want you to live? Am I not the God of joy? Am I not inviting you to dance? God encourages us to appreciate our limitations and our need for rest and recess. Be still, as the choir reminded us, and just know that I'm God and that you're not. I think that for me, the the command to take Sabbath is a rebuke to my arrogance and my self-importance, which I absolutely need. Because sometimes we are tempted to believe that the world cannot do without us for a day. Right? Oh no, if I were to take a day off, everything would fall apart. No, what we actually mean is it wouldn't get done our way. That's it. (laughs) Maybe it's okay to trust that other people can handle it. That you're not available to them because you're available to God for a day. It's all right. I can do that. Things, I just think, but, but if I take a break or if this thing comes up, things will go wrong from my perspective. If I'm not involved, I want to go back into over-functioning mode again. But the world needs a break from me, too. Every bit as much as I need a break from the world. There's an anecdote I read somewhere about a frenzied preacher who, in his arrogance, reportedly said, Satan doesn't take a day off, and therefore, neither do I. 
And a wise and witty parishioner told that preacher, you need a better role model. <laughs> because our Lord Jesus made himself unavailable at times. Remember? He'd go off on his own just to be with him and God. Jesus needed that. Jesus wanted to delight in God so that Jesus could do the things that God had commanded on the other days. Oh, to take a refreshing rest, to drink in of God, that God has given us these things as a gift. Let Jesus be your role model. And I know, I know, friends, there are terrible things in this world, and we do have responsibilities. There, are, Again, Jesus also understood that this is not to be like this hard and fast legalistic rule. Like Jesus, when his disciples were hungry, he let them harvest, right? They, they took a little bit of grain and they ate it, and the Pharisees were all, in, they got their knickers in a twist. That's a fun expression to use. I don't know why, but, you know, and they're like, they're doing work. <laughs> they're doing work. They can't do work on the Sabbath. As a matter of fact, the Pharisees made keeping the Sabbath a really difficult job, really hard work. And Jesus had to remind them, hey, God gave the Sabbath as a gift to people, not just as another way to crack the whip. Come on. And besides, none of the commandments were given us as God cracking the whip. No, they're all, all of them are an invitation into life a better form of life. For six days, for most of the work, yes, we've got good work to do and we can be productive and there's great fulfillment in that. Yes, work hard, do it well. Yes, 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 absolutely. But on the seventh day, don't touch that. Acknowledge God. It's like the tree in the middle of the garden. You have access to all these trees. Just keep this one set apart for me. Just as an acknowledgement that I'm God and you're not. That's what the Sabbath is too. Just hands off that day. It's holy. It's God's. It's a recess. And notice that in, in this command, everyone's included because we're all included in creation. It's kind of a way of saying we belong. We are like, like the animals, like the, the plants, like, the other, like all people. We're, we're created beings. We belong to God, not the other way around. And let's just all take recess, stop our warring, stop our fighting, stop our need to manipulate others and just be for a day. And my heart is heavy for those in Israel and for those in Palestine today. And for those who are suffering, our hearts are heavy for them. We need to be rested so that we can be a place of Sabbath for them, right? They don't need just one more person who's anxious, worried, stressed, overbearing. No, rest so that you can be a place of rest for others and that we will know that God is a place of rest for us. The Sabbath was given to us. Not so that we would have one more day to serve, one more day to work, one more commandment to keep, but to remind us that God is good. Can't you hear his heart beating in love for you? And when we disobey this commandment, we're hurting ourselves and others. Let's stop doing that. And I don't care if it's a Saturday or a Sunday, some of us work on Sundays, you know, I don't care what day it is that you take as your Sabbath, take it. God wants to have that time with you. God wants to have that time with you. Don't keep putting God off. Recess. Let's pray. Oh God, we get so self-important, but we're children. The children led us in worship this morning. They brought the symbolic light of Jesus into this sanctuary while we were just sitting there. They, they led us in worship, and we are just like them. We are children. We are all of us children, God of you. The bell has rung. It's time to go out into the playground for a little bit. Go down the slide. Grab a swing. Laugh. Run around. Play tag. Play hide and seek. Be a kid. Be a part of this beautiful creation. Remember that God is good. See it. Enjoy it. It's not just all labor, labor and hard work and misery. There is joy and peace and love, too, to be found with God.
Oh God, please have mercy on us and forgive us and teach us what Sabbath is all about. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, as you are able, we invite you to stand and let's sing our next hymn of praise, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say.